Uh, hello everyone, it's about time now. So I uh, welcome you all to today's webinar. Uh, let's start the proceedings. So uh, I'll, I would like to introduce myself first. I'm Vaishnavi Thakur, a master's student in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Information Systems at the University of Tokyo. And today I'm joined by Ms. Kushi Javeri, a student of the Kiyo University as a sub-facilitator. So today's webinar is about study and work in Japan. It aims to promote the education in Japan by motivating students to pursue higher studies here. The University of Tokyo India office is organizing these sessions where experts from various universities come across and they'll be providing the information and guidance on various programs being offered in the universities. Japan has the third largest economy in the world but so with a huge demand for the skilled professionals and not forgetting the fact that it has the highest employment rate among the other developed g7 nations but still many students uh, choose western countries over uh, for the higher education so we believe that it is mainly because of the lack of opportunity awareness of a wonderful opportunities japan offers there are also various misconceptions like the japanese language requirements tuition fees living expenses job prospects and so on these webinars aim to bridge the gap and provide answers to these questions. So if you have any queries, please post them in the Q&A portal and we have a team of panelists and also universities to answer them. Uh, I'll be sharing my agenda slide for today. Okay, so uh, we, the agenda slide is as follows. So uh, started, uh, we'll start it with the introduction by Ms. Akshisan, the program assistant of the University of Tokyo India office, and then the study and work in Japan uh, session by Ms. Kushi, who would share her university experience here, and then followed by the various university presentations. So with this, I would like to hand over the proceedings to Ms. Sakshi-san, uh, who is the director program assistant of the University of Tokyo India office, to provide more details about these webinars. Uh, thank you, uh, Vaishnavi San. Let me share my screen with you. Uh, is it visible? Uh, yes, it is. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar, Study and Work in Japan, Session 31. My name is Takshi Roy, and this program is brought to you by MEX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. So, uh, first of all, before giving you a brief introduction about our project, I would like to thank all of you. We are so glad that you have participated in our webinars. Thank you for supporting our online seminars by attending. And to all our panelists, thank you for contributing into this webinar. Uh, because of your support and contribution, we have successfully completed 30 series of this amazing study and work in Japan project. And there will be more such series uh, we have planned to introduce to you in the future. So uh, before we start, let me give you an uh, introduction about our office. Our office is a part of Study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia Biomex, and we provide comprehensive information on Japanese universities. We organize education fairs and seminars throughout India to spread awareness about higher education opportunities in Japan. So today is the 31st session of uh, study and work in Japan a webinar series and by means of all these sessions, our mission is to introduce uh, Japanese universities to you and to assist you to study and work in Japan. So there will be uh, three different Japanese universities representing in each session, national, public and private university. And all the universities are basically focusing to introduce English based programs that are offered by them. And there has been approximately 700 plus universities as well as specialized vocational institutions in Japan. So uh, you have so many options to choose from world-class universities, whether it is Ritsumikan University, Shimane University, Kyoto University, uh, Osaka, TIU. Many more universities we have planned to introduce to you in our webinar series have been ranked among the top universities in the world. So if you consider studies in Japan, you learn from very best in the world once and once you graduate from a um, reputed university with a good level of working Japanese, you can easily get a job in some uh, best MNCs, not only in Japan, but in other countries as well. 
So it's uh, really a great opportunity for all of you to participate in our webinars and you can directly ask your queries to representatives of each university. And lastly, I would like to add an um, important point uh, here uh, that there are so many of you joining us and it's been difficult for us to answer all of your queries during the webinar. So it's better if we can note down the contact addresses of each university. And then uh, if, you, if your question hasn't been answered during the session, you can contact them directly later on uh, also. And also please, um, right now you can scan this QR code to register for our upcoming webinars. And this is the email address of our office. In case uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We would be very happy to assist you. And thank you again for tuning in uh, into this webinar and we request uh, you to please stay till the end we have a lot of useful information to share with you and we hope uh, you enjoy the experience and receive beneficial information uh, from our webinars thank you very much and please enjoy today's session oh, thank you sakshi san for your wonderful words so without any further ado let's uh, proceed with the next presentation. We have uh, Ms. Kushi San, who is a student from the Kiyo University. Uh, now she would give a brief overview of study and work life in Japan, along with her student experience here. Thank you so much, Ms. Vaishnavi, for the introduction. Um, I hope I'm audible. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm my presentation right away. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, yes, you may proceed. Thank you so much. So good afternoon to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri from Keio University. And today I'll be talking about the study and work life in Japan. So I'll start by giving a brief introduction about myself. I was raised in Tokyo and I graduated from an international school in Tokyo. I'm a third year undergraduate student at Keio University. I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree in environmental engineering and information technology. At present, I am a member of the India-Japan Laboratory, the GIS Laboratory, and the SDPE Laboratory at Keio University. I'm also a recipient of the Keio University Scholarship and have previously interned at Shibara Institute of Technology, Hitachi, and I'm currently interning at Tsukuba University. And last year, I was also a member of the Social Innovation Hackathon that was held in collaboration with well-known universities in India, including IIT and NIT. So why should you choose Japan as your destination to pursue further studies? Firstly, Japan is the third largest economy in the world with a population of 126 million and 47 prefectures. It is a member of the G7 summit with other developed countries, including US, UK, Canada, and Germany. Japan ranks ninth in the Global Peace Index and has topped the Safe Cities Index for the third consecutive time. There are a range of international cuisines such as Indian, Italian, Nepalese, and Japanese available to students coming from the overseas. Recently, culturally appropriate food, including halal, vegetarian, and vegan options are also available. Health policies have proved to be very beneficial to international students as 70% of the costs are paid by the government. The several universities in Japan that offer English programs at undergraduate, graduate, and doctoral levels. In Japan, undergraduate programs are for four years, graduate for one or two, depending on the program you're applying for, and doctoral for three to four years. The English programs in Japan are well-renowned because professors have great expertise in their respective fields and have also created unique approaches to teach students. Japanese universities are categorized into national that are founded by the Japanese government, public that are laid by local public entities, and private that are based on founders. Japanese universities provide essential resources to aid the personal and professional growth of students. Universities support them by providing student services and facilities, including libraries, research labs, student lounge, gymnasiums, and dormitories. So um, the fee structure is, an, is, an, is a very important aspect while applying to universities. And I, certain, and I certainly believe that Japan is one of the most affordable countries for students to pursue their further studies as the tuition fee for international students and domestic students is the same, unlike US and Canada. We have presented a chart that helps one understand and compare the differences between the tuition fee in the US and Japan. 
the tuition fee of public universities in the US is five times higher than the ones in Japan, while the private universities in the US is three times more. The living expenses are similar, but Japan is much cheaper than the US in terms of overall education. Financial assistance is also provided by universities or the Japanese government in the form of internal and external scholarships. The mixed scholarship and the JASO scholarship are some of the well-known scholarships within international students. In order to apply for the master's or the PhD courses, it is crucial for the applicant to contact the supervisor of the program for admission assistance. The job opportunities in Japan are countless. Graduates from Japanese universities usually tend to work for multinational companies such as Amazon, Google, Toyota, and Panasonic. Graduates, especially with a computer background, have a great scope in Japan. The average salary after graduation is 3.9 million yen per year, which is 27 lakh rupees. Japan also has the lowest unemployment rate, which is 2.34%. Visa procurement is not a very tedious process, and the student visa can be upgraded to working visa if the student is able to find a job within Japan. So as one can infer from this graph, the number of dispositions for employment purposes from international students has been escalating over the years. 2019 witnessed double the capacity of international students than 2017. There has been a 50% increase in the number of dispositions. The number of international students from Southeast Asia has been increasing because of the wide job prospects in Japan. Hence, many international students come to Japan with the aim to pursue further studies and a career in Japan. So now I'll talk about my student life in Japan. Um, from my experience, I can certainly say that my university has opened doors to several opportunities and experiences. The picture on the left is from an event called the Sokei Sen, which is a term used for the baseball game between two prestigious universities, Keio University and Masada University. The picture on the right is from the hackathon that was held last year in collaboration with IIT and NIT. In the India-Japan laboratory, we conduct social and cultural events so that students from both countries are given the chance to communicate and collaborate. In the GIS laboratory, we aim to approach different challenges of the environment by using various computer-based tools. Lastly, another very interesting factor of studying in Japan is the opportunity to experience various seasons. Compared to other countries, Japan does not experience harsh climates. One can enjoy different seasons in the country, for example, witnessing cherry blossoms in spring to the stellar views in fall and winter. The diverse weather conditions give students the chance to experience different seasons and travel across the country. So I would like to conclude my presentation here. I hope I was able to give students and parents an insight into the study and work life in Japan. And I look forward to meeting you soon in Japan. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kushi, for the amazing presentation. The information you shared will be definitely useful for the prospective students. Uh, so next, let's move on with the university presentations now. So before we proceed further, I would like to uh, share the agenda sc agenda slide and then um, the presentation of each university is for 20 minutes and which is followed by Q&A session of five minutes. So if you have any questions, you can please post them in the Q&A portal and the universities and our panelists will answer them for you. So uh, we have uh, in the beginning, we have the uh, Ritzmeken University. So I would like to uh, invite Ms. Priyanka, the Deputy Director of Ritzmeken uh, India Office to give her presentation. But before that, let me introduce in brief about Ritzmeken University. So it is known as one of the Western Japan's four leading private universities. It is well known for its international relations and science and engineering departments. The university has exchange programs with some of the prominent schools throughout the world. Another interesting thing about the university is its name. The meaning of Ritsumeken is a place to establish one's mission in life. So uh, I would like to request Ms. Priyanka to uh, give more details about the university admission process and various scholarships available. Over to you, Ms. Priyanka. Thank you very much, Ms. Thakur. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, students. So I'll start with my presentation. Okay. So before I start, uh, I'll uh, share briefly about myself. I'm Priyanka. I've been working with Ritsumekan for the last 11 years. 
and I'm situated in Delhi NCR region and my main uh, my main role is to help Indian students uh, to help them uh, whatever query they have when they have when they want to apply for Ritsume camp. Uh, so this is my role in India. So I'll share uh, the details about Ritsume camp University. So this big R in Japan, this big R is very popular with the name of Ritsume camp University. So let us understand today why study in Japan and why Ritsume camp University. So I'm just sharing pictures from the campus, spring uh, weather. So beautiful picture from the spring weather. One more picture from the campus, summer, fall, and winter. So where are we located? We are located in Kansai region. That's about two hours, 30 minutes from Tokyo. We are interconnected by flight, train, bus, uh, we have four campuses in, Shig in Shiga, Kyoto, and Osaka. I'll be sharing more details about that. Kyoto, uh, you know, to talk about Kyoto, Kyoto is historical, nostalgic, and student-friendly. Shiga, we have an engineering campus in Shiga. It's beautiful, rich in nature, industrial, and relaxed. Osaka, it's very vibrant, welcoming, and commercial hub. Talking about Kyoto city, one out of 10 people is a university student. And also any tourist coming to Japan, when they visit Japan, they do come to Tokyo and they do definitely come to Kyoto as well. And it's very, very comfortable for any new student to settle down in Kyoto and nearby area with so many university students and uh, tourists visiting the city. So being selected by Japanese government as one of the top global university. Uh, we've been ranked number three for the research funding. Uh, the number of foreign faculty member, we've been ranked number one in Western Japan with 139 foreign faculties. We have 2,755 foreign students from 71 countries and region that are studying in all our campuses. Talking about the international partner institution, we have 463 universities and institutions in 68 countries and region uh, we have partnership with. And uh, every child gets an opportunity to do a study abroad. So whether they want to do a short duration or a semester, they can do in any of the partner institution and they don't have to pay anything extra. Moving forward, talking about our campus. Sorry. Yeah. So our first campus is Kinogasa campus in Kyoto. That's an international relation program. We, we teach uh, the English taught international relation program. Second is Bivako Kusatsu campus. We have undergraduate information science and engineering program. And third is Osaka Ibaraki. We have policy science and global liberal arts. So these are the undergraduate program. We also have postgraduate and master's program as well. I'll be sharing the details for the same. We have 400 clubs and circles. Yeah. Part-time job, every child coming to Japan have an opportunity to do a part-time job for 28 hours per week. They can get a work permit at the airport. They can work on campus and off campus. Student support, we have a student support that is available for any kind of a support that you require, career planning, housing, academic, study abroad, visa, and on campus. Accommodation, we have on and off campus accommodation that belongs to Ritsumikan. That's about five to 15 minutes walking distance. So one of the picture that you can see from the accommodation or dormitory. There's a strong peer support. We have 3000 student staff. Uh, they are very, very important. Once you land um, in Japan and you're coming to Ritsumikan, they will support you, help you and settle down in the university and in the accommodation. 
career planning uh, so after whether you want to work in japan whether you want to work anywhere in the world whether you want to do your masters in japan or anywhere in the world so career planning office is very very important so the key features uh, i'll share very quickly we have scholarship 20% 50% 100% tuition reduction accommodation is available everything is online online interview online application and english only no japanese is required for admission while you are studying in the university you will be taught japanese language as part of the program and the study abroad opportunities that are available so these are the five programs i'll be sharing the details with all of you the first two are the collaborative degree uh, global liberal arts and rjd program joint degree program with american university and the last three are the single degree they all are four year full time program fully taught in english so the first program is a college of global liberal arts it's a dual degree with australian national university and this is how your degree will look like you will graduate from uh, ritsumikan japan and you will graduate from australia enu so uh, we have april and september intake it's a it's huge intake of 100 students it's located in osaka ibaraki and some of the key words that you can read from here uh, that i can mention about the global liberal arts so one of the picture from a new campus and some of the facts about a new campus it's number 1 in australia 27th in the world 9 in the world for politics so why global liberal arts why gla it's a world class education 3 plus 1 year you will be taught by both professors you have an opportunity to study in both universities very truly international and diverse environment and the new liberal arts for new era it's a very very different program so some of the career path that are mentioned and there are many more uh, that are available uh, government agency consultancy firm business and trade organization development and aid organization media agency research organization and universities so few pictures from a new campus yeah so talking about the second program it's a joint degree with american university and with this program you will be studying two years in ritsumikan and two years in american a u uh, american university you will be taught by both professor it's a uh, april intake and it's in uh, kinogasa kyoto uh, is the campus and the keywords are us japan relation global and comparative governance peace and global security conflict resolution identity race gender and culture global ir and sakura sakura scholars some of the facts about american university so to talk about the third program that is fully taught in japan is a global study major from kyoto campus it's one of the key feature is it we are the full member of apsia and we are the only member in japan who is a full member and the other university around the world who have this membership are some of the ivy leagues to talk about columbia harvard yale some of the examples uh, for the same it's a four year full time program and some of the keywords is a huge intake of 100 students april and september and the keywords are international law peace and conflict studies security study international human rights the united nation global environmental issue gender issue race and ethnicity global media so uh, some of the key features is 50% international student 50% japanese student many professors have experience and career in industry um, they they have worked for years in some of the big organization like united nation world bank and many other big companies around the world and now they are teaching students and also japanese language would be part of the program the fourth program is community and regional policy study major uh which is ba in policy science it's september intake some of the keywords i can share urban planning for sustainable city community safety development economics environmental politics policies global global public policy social welfare policy revitalization of rural areas 
so this is a picture of one of the indian student uh, she got an she's studying she's still studying in the same program she got an opportunity to do a field work project in thailand and so picture from that so to talk about the last program it's bachelors of engineering it's a four year full time program and uh, the keywords for the program would be iot business intelligence data science artificial intelligence robot technology human interface effective engineering digital human virtual reality and advanced computer graphic so some of the career path that you can look at as big data analyst global ict support specialist e government system engineer smart city engineer digital, digital humanities curator and these are some of them and there are many more uh to talk about uh, how to apply i'll be sharing this link with all of you you just have to go on this link download the application handbook and the application handbook has all the information and you can upload uh, once the application period start you can upload all your documents and you'll be done uh to share with you very briefly the documents that are required would be a passport copy the english test score if you are applying for a collaborative degree with australian national university and american university but for all the other program that you'll be fully taught in japan you can just give a letter from the school and it can, your english can be waived a uh, recommendation letter from the school the format is there in our application handbook academic transcript your 11th your 12th and your predicted scores would be required essays would be very important if you're looking for scholarship so that is very very important and the topics are given in the application handbook again i'll repeat i'll share the link with all of you a uh, certificate for high school graduation just a letter from the school would be required again the format is given in the application handbook moving forward uh, the various application intake if you're looking at april or september intake for september our application are still going on from october 6 to october 26 this is our application are going on if you miss this you can even apply in december or february so again for our international relation program for september intake our application is in december but you can prepare your papers you can prepare your application and you can keep it ready once the application start you just upload it and you're done for policy science again it's in december and for information science and engineering the students who have already graduated class 12 they are already cleared class 12 they can still apply for the coming april our application is still going on till october 26th and you will get the result by december 9th so uh, the fee structure uh, this is without scholarship uh, so it's about 8 to 9 lakhs uh, depending upon the program and it can be till 11 lakhs and the living cost approximately 8 to 9 lakhs as well so there's a 20% tuition reduction 50% tuition reduction and 100% tuition reduction is available with every child getting a 20% tuition reduction also to share with you the max scholarship offered for our crps program that's a policy science program and uh, the india is part of the eligible uh, country and it includes the tuition waiver the, for all four years living stipend for four years and the travel allowance a round fare air ticket for four years and the number of recipient are six students so no separate application is needed uh, for the scholarship you just have to apply and if you are eligible you will be uh, your name can be suggested for next scholarship so for the undergraduate uh, i have already shared for the postgraduate these are some of the program international relation then policy science technology and management economics science and engineering information science and engineering and life sciences all the programs are full, are taught in english so these are english top programs so uh, you can just in case you want to download our admission over you overview you can just scan uh, this page and you will be able to download the same for april and september intake multiple application period you can download this 
And for student voices, so some of the examples are given here, you just have to scan and you'll be able to, you'll reach the student voices and you'll be hear voices from all over the world. So my details I'll be sharing with all of you in the chat column as well. Uh, before uh, closing, I'll share a small video for all of you. That you'd never find. I know something about a state of mind. I've got the dream of me. The roses bloom and the sun will shine. Leave your troubles in the world behind. Stars shine bright away you feel your mind. I've got the dream of me. students so I'm available for question answers thank you very much wishing you all the best thank you thank you Miss Priyanka for such a comprehensive presentation let's look into the Q&A portal so um, there's a student who wants to know if there are any exchange programs uh, with Indian universities Uh, thank you very much. Yes, we do have an uh, exchange program with Indian universities. Uh, we have, uh, you know, it depends on which program you're talking about, especially for engineering. We have students coming uh, from Symbiosis Pune. We have students coming from many other universities around India. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Priyanka. And there's another question asking about uh, game designing and development programs. Uh, so, uh, if, if, if I share uh, for the undergraduate, I've already shared, uh, that's Bachelor of Engineering, but uh, the, the modules that I've shared is more to do with computing, but if you want uh, the complete details, I'll share my details with you and you can contact me and I can share a more update for the program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Priyanka. And... Uh, uh, a student says that right now the office is closed in New Delhi. So, like, uh, whom can they contact to have counseling? So, is that okay if they contact you? Or like, yes, uh, I think I'll share. We can share the details in the chat box. Yes, yes. So, I'll be quickly sharing my details in the chat column, and I'll be very, very happy whether you want to come online or offline. I'll be very, very happy to help and guide you. Thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you, Priyanka. And also, like, are you the first point of contact for admission in the uh, in the university, or do they have to mail any admission committee for the uh, inter like uh, international admission office, or is that all right to contact you? Uh, yes. So, if they want to contact uh, in India, they can contact me, and you know, in case they want to meet from somebody from Japan, I can connect them uh, to Japan admission office as well. Uh, but yes, I, in case uh, if they are from India, so I'll be the first point of contact. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you Ms. Priyanka. And also there is one another question about the, like with the scholarships you have mentioned, are they applicable to all the programs, like the MBA programs and the graduate programs? So they're applicable to all the programs, right? Yes, so 20%, 50%, and 100% tuition reduction is applicable to all the programs. And there are many more scholarships. Uh, they can be said as a hidden scholarship. So once you apply, and if you're eligible, your name will be recommended for the same. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Priyanka. I think we can end our Q&A session here. Thank you once again for assisting in the questions and for such a comprehensive presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let me share the agenda screen. So let's move on with the next university. So we have a Shimane University. So Shimane University is located in Shimane Prefecture in the countryside of Japan and was established as a national university in 1949. Globalization is paramount and since 2018, new partnerships have been undertaken, including with the UNESCO and the University of Oxford. Uh, overseas student enrollment has increased very rapidly due to globalization, especially for graduate schools, such as the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology, which is offered in English. The university also provides job hunting support to international students, which caters to diverse job opportunity preferences. There are scholarships and aids for the large scale companies that represent Japan, in addition to the traditional industries, such as Japanese tea companies. Shimane University is also deeply involved in SDGs, working to solve the issues in Japan and globally. The university is a comprehensive institution and can meet the diverse research needs of international students. So in order to provide more details about the admission process, I invite Assistant Professor Catherine Simpson, who works at the International Center of the University. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, please allow me to share my slideshow. Just a moment, please. All right. Is everyone able to see the screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, uh, my name is Catherine Simpson. I am from the International Center at Shimane University. And as mentioned uh, before in the introduction, Shimane University is a national, inter national university. So that means that um, it's government based and many national universities have the same tuition or, or very similar tuition or uh, prices or admission. Um, uh, admission fees as well. So we'll go over that a little bit later. But first of all, you may be thinking, where is Shimane Prefecture? So uh, Shimane Prefecture is this, let me pull out my pen. Um, Shimane Prefecture is the pink area on the map here uh, from Tokyo. It's about an hour, hour 15 flight. Uh, and then from Osaka, it's about a four hour train ride. You take um, the bullet train and then you take the local train. But so not very far away from uh, large hubs if you'd like to go, but also um, it's a very different experience from living in the sort of city life in Japan. Um, and also living costs vary uh, greatly. It's much cheaper to live in the countryside in Japan than it is to live in say Tokyo or Kyoto. So uh, Shimane University, has two campuses. Shimane University uh, cam its main campus is called Matsue Campus. That's the capital, uh, Matsue City. And then we also have Izumo Campus. That's our medical facility campus. So uh, Shimane University is an extremely, um, our Shimane Prefecture is an extremely historical prefecture. We have Matsue Castle, which is one of the last existing um, standing, uh, originally standing castles left in. Japan. We have Izumo Grand, 
Taisha Grand Shrine, which is famous all across Japan. We also have the Iwami Ginzan Silver Mines, which um, are were extremely profitable during the silver collecting period in Japan. So just a little bit about Matsai City. Uh, the population is about 200,000. Um, in January, it can get down to 4.2 degrees Celsius, um, maybe a little colder. And in August, it um, gets to be about 2.6 degrees Celsius, um, actually maybe around 30. <laughs> uh, it can get to 33 or so, but uh, you know, it depends on where you're from and what type of temperature you're used to. So these are just average temperatures. Um, some of the some of this was mentioned in the introduction, but we do have um, a lot of different research projects that are going on, and uh, one of them is called Nexa Co-Creation Tathara or Nexa Generation Tathara Co-Creation Center, um, which works with metal and metal materials. Um, we have a an agreement with the University of Oxford, where our students can go abroad and study at Oxford, the University of Oxford, um, and learn more about uh, making metals for, say, drones, cars, airplanes, that sort of thing. We also are very interested in our SDGs. Um, we are promoting efforts and doing everything we can to um, complete our goals, to uh, to complete the university's goals for um, promoting SDGs. So again, like I said, there are two different campuses, uh, Motsai campus and Izumo campus. I'm going to go through both of these. So um, first I'll go through the campuses uh, by courses. So um, because this seminar, uh, web seminar, uh, webinar rather, is it more about English courses. I will very lightly touch on courses we have in Japanese. Anyone who would like this slideshow afterward can email me personally and I will email you the slideshow. But um, so mainly I'll be focusing on the English courses offered in English. So um, for the, our undergraduate, we have uh, the interdisciplinary faculty of science and engineering, which has a Japanese course and also a bilingual course. So the bilingual course is in English and in Japanese. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, we also have the Faculty of Law and Literature, the Faculty of Human Science, and the Faculty of Life and Environmental Science. These are in Japanese only. We recommend that you have JLPT or Japanese language proficiency test level of N2 or higher, um, preferably N1. Most fa faculties prefer N1. So for now, we won't go into much detail with those. And then at, at our Izumo campus, um, we have <coughs> here, I'll go back to the Matsai campus first. So the School of Humanities, uh, Graduate School of Humanities is in Japanese only, but in English, we have completely in English is the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. Um, and also completely in English is the Graduate School of Medical Research at Izumo campus. So next I'd like to go into the bilingual education course. So um, again, if you'd like these slides later, you can go over the courses that require um, high levels of Japanese. But right now, um, so I'd like to go into the bilingual course. So the bilingual course, um, again, has physics and material science, chemistry, earth science, mathematics, information systems and design and data science. That's like computer science, essentially. Mechanical, electron, electrical and electronic engineering and architectural design. So basically, what is a bilingual course? So the application requirements are that one, you have a JLPT, Japanese language proficiency test, level of N4 or higher. So there are five levels of this test. Uh, N1 is the highest and N5 is the lowest. So if you go with N4, that means you're able to read a certain amount of Japanese, um, but it's not a very difficult test, I believe. Um, and then uh, we also have TOEFL, uh, English requirement, TOEFL of um, if you take the IBT of 70 or an IELTS score, overall band score of 5.5 or higher. So essentially what happens is you'll see in this chart below or in this table here that you have courses in English um, here in your first year 
and then you have courses in English and Japanese. Um, so you're slowly, you start in English and then slowly in your second year and third year, you're transitioning from English to Japanese. And then in your final fourth year, um, your undergraduate research is in Japanese. Also, the uh, for the reports, exams, and theses, English can be used. So you're not completely thrown into the deep end and completely forsaking English. You can still use English. So this is a way to um, get your feet wet as an undergraduate student at the university, at uh, Chimani University. So next, I'd like to go into the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. Um, we have a master's course and we have a doctorate course. Uh, for the master's course, there are three different majors. Science and engineering is the first one where you have, it's very similar to the uh, course I just described, uh, the undergraduate course I just described, but mathematics, information systems, information systems design and data science, physics and material science, mechanical, electronical, electro electrical and electronic engineering. Second major is science of environmental systems. So earth science, environmental and sustainability sciences, chemistry and architectural design. And then our third major, agricultural and life sciences, which includes life sciences and agricultural and forest science. In our doctoral course, we have one major with two different courses. So the major here we have is science and engineering for innovation. And it's broken up into two different courses, science and engineering and science and of natural environmental systems course. So here again, you see the same sort of uh, courses, you know, earth science, um, mathematics, information systems and design, um, architectural design, same sort of courses that you would see in our master's course, only you'd be studying them at a higher level. So how do you get, uh, this is uh, about information about getting into Shimani University. So like I said, um, there's uh, an, the admission fee and tuition for national universities are generally fairly similar um, throughout the country, if not the same. Um, but the, you have a one-time payment admission fee and all um, numbers, all financial numbers in this document are written in Japanese yen. So I will give a rough um, estimate in US dollars as well, but it's around um, 3,000 US dollars um, for the admission fee. And for tuition, it's around, um, give or take, 5,300 5, um, US dollars per year for tuition. So if you're in the master's program, which is only two years, um, then you'd be paying that per, per each year of the master's program. The doctorate program is a three-year program. And obviously the undergraduate program is a four-year program. So you can do the math yourself on that. One thing I would like to showcase is that for um, graduate students only, so that means the master's course and the doctorate course, we have a tuition exemption. So you can apply and you may get a full exemption or a half exemption on your tuition. Um, so if you apply, it doesn't mean perhaps that you'll get it, but there is a high chance that you will get it. It just depends on the year, how many people apply, how good your grades are, um, how good of a student you are. Um, so it is to your benefit to have been a good student before you enter the university or while you're in the university it, to be a good student. So um, a lot of people I think asked these, uh, I, thought, I thought I saw some questions in the Q&A box about um, how do you apply for the master's or doctorate program? So first you have to contact a professor and about contacting a professor, I will leave in the chat box um, a email address that you can um, contact for general inquiries and that you can ask them how to show you how you can find a professor to sponsor your research. So basically that's the first step is finding somebody who is willing to sponsor your research. And then this was also in the Q&A box, I believe, um, for the master's and for the doctorate program, um, you need to prepare a field of study or a research plan. So here, if you scan this QR code, you can get more information. Again, if you're missing the QR codes and you'd like them later, um, or if you want me to put links in the chat box, please let me know. So international students at Shimani University. Um, 
just a quick sort of overview. This is a, as of uh, 2021 in May. Um, we have 214 students from 24 countries. Not all the students have been able to come to Japan just because of COVID, um, but we do have over 200 international students at our university, and we're slowly waiting for them to be able to come into the country. Uh, most of them are from China, but surprisingly, the second highest is from Bangladesh. And like I said, uh, I may not have said this, but many of them are in the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. Um, like I said here, if you look at the graduate students, 101 graduate students this year, uh, numbers in parentheses are for the medical campus. So the medical campus also has quite a few um, students. Both of these are in English. So um, that is quite a few number of students. Uh, many of you asked about scholarships. I believe a lot of the links that I'm going to show you have already been posted. But um, I know many of you have talked about MEXT. And these are the, um, again, all of this is in Japanese yen per month, um, the MEX scholarship. And I know this one can be a really difficult one to get, um, but it is a very good scholarship. It gives you, um, it doesn't allow you to work part-time, but you wouldn't need to work part-time in Shimani, in Shimani Prefecture if you got the MEX scholarship. You would definitely have enough to live on, plus have extra, much extra left over. Um, then there's the JASO Honors Scholarship. And then this is just an example. We, um, we have collaborations with pr private institutions within Shimane Prefecture, um, but also we offer information on scholarships um, that are available. Um, we, do, we put out emails twice a year, and we also have a scholarship um, explanation seminar so you can figure out how to apply for scholarships. But we do, this is just a couple examples of scholarships that we have to offer. I can also add a link if somebody wants that link um, to scho um, possible scholarships or a, a, a link to all of these scholarships that um, these are just examples of scholarships that we offer to our students. So um, something in your scholarship search I would recommend is for um, possibly getting, as you can see, this is a Korean scholarship. So um, there may be scholarships that are specific to the country that you are from. And so that is to your benefit because then it decreases the amount of competitiveness for the scholarship. Um, I believe these two links were both posted in the chat box, but I will showcase them right now again, just in case. Um, so there's the Study in Japan or JASO um, website here where you can look up more information on scholarships. And then there's the Japan Study Support site. Um, and then there's an English version here. So if you uh, scan either of these two QR codes, you'll get more information on how to look up um, scholarship information on your own. So at least at Shimani University, we have 14 students. This is as of um, May 1st, 2021. 14 students on the MEC scholarship, 11 on the JASO Honor Scholarship. And then people get scholarships from their own country as well. So 15 students here, 28 uh, private scholarships, and then we have 146 unsupported. Many people save up for university, but also many people want to get a part-time job so they can learn more Japanese, make friends, um, and get like a full, well-rounded university experience. I know there were some, um, this is also about work and study. So, um, we do, do do have job hunting support in Japan. Uh, uh, we have the Career Center. Uh, and we hold job hunting guidance seminars, individual counseling, um, internship matching events with different local companies. Um, and so this counseling is held um, in English. So you don't have to worry about knowing Japanese or not. Also, um, I'm going to skip past the slide because um, these are scholarships mainly if you know Japanese. So if you want more information on this, please email me. And I will put my email in the chat after. Uh, work and study in Japan. So you can see, you can, uh, sorry, I forgot to change the years to um, the regular uh, years, but you can see that more people 
are working at Japanese companies. This is the most recent. This is uh, later. But more people are starting to work in Japanese companies. Um, some more people are continuing to on in their education. And student lodging. Very quickly, we have the student dormitory. Um, it's about a 10-15 minute walk from campus. Um, we have student buildings A, B, and C, which are all different prices. Um, so uh, building B is the most popular because it, it's the equivalent to about 40 US dollars a month. Um, and that has a shared kitchen and bathroom. Each of the floors in the uh, dormitory are based on um, gender, so uh, women, men, women, men. So you're not going to be put on a floor that um, has mixed genders. So um, I'm going to skip past this slide. Um, most people live within about 15 minutes of the campus. Um, if you want a shared type of apartment and you don't want to live in the dormitory, um, then it's about 50, maybe 150 US dollars, give or take. And then um, in, if you want your own one room type apartment, it's about $250 US dollars, give or take um, per month. So uh, fairly uh, cheap, especially compared to places like Tokyo, Osaka, uh, Kyoto, place, uh, larger cities. So student life. Um, we do have Japanese language classes. We don't have a Japanese language course per se. This is all for non-credit. So as you're studying, you can learn Japanese. Um, so we have uh, where one where you can learn the writing system, one where you can learn basic Japanese, um, and then got Japanese for graduate school students and for the JLPT exam. Uh, there are international student field trips. This is before Corona. Um, everything is online now, so we do still have um different caf online cafes and exchange events online with different parts of the country other countries and also um with um onan here onan town is a very small um countryside town um and we had we recently had an exchange with the elementary school children that live there very cute and the last slide that i will um, put up is the tutor system so for the first six to nine months that you're at Shimani University, six months can be extended to nine months, but you will have a Japanese student tutor um, who will help you with things like getting a bank account, getting your internet set up, getting your phone set up, um, and with uh, learning Japanese language, helping with your everyday life and studies. So uh, know that when you get to Shimani University, you will have a friend to help you and to support you and you will not be alone. So again, if anyone would like this slideshow afterward, um, I'm happy to share it. I will share my information in the chat box, but um, it has many different links to many different places. Um, here's, I will share this address in the chat box, but this is our generally general inquiries office uh, for the International uh, Exchange Division. And then there's also, um, you can watch, there are two different videos that are subtitled in English on our Shimani University YouTube channel. So if you want to know more about uh, regular life at Shimani University or just about Shimani University in general, I encourage you to look at those. So thank you very much. Thank you, Professor, for such an interesting presentation. It has covered all the details. and. Uh, we can look into the Q&A portal now. So would you like to pick up a few questions or do you want me to assist? Um, if you could help, that would be great. <laughs> yes. So we have a question like uh, when students apply to the university, so what do uh, what does the admission team look into it? Like what is the criteria for the selection of students? So that depends on whether you're um, applying for the undergraduate course or the graduate course. Um, the undergraduate course, obviously for the bilingual course would look at your uh, JLPT score and your English score. Uh, for the graduate course, um, your main um, part for the admission process is going to be your research plan. Um, so your professor should be able to help you with your research plan, um, but that will be very important. And also, um, some depending on the professor that you're studying with, um, and depending on what major and what your research plan is, you may or may not need an English test score. 
okay okay that's great and also usually like is the uh, admission process through the supervisor and then it goes to the admissions team or is it through admissions team and uh, in in parallel we need to contact the supervisor so generally your supervisor will help you um contact the um, admissions team directly and submit all your documents directly to the admissions team and if you get confused and um, have trouble filling out the paperwork um, you do need say for example you do need um, to get permission from your supervisor um, saying like yes this person will support my studies so your part, so supervisor is a part of the work but the first um, sort of reception window that you're going to go to is um, the admissions team yes thank you thank you professor and also are there any mba courses in the university unfortunately we do not have, offer mba courses okay okay thank you and what about uh, masters in data science and ai uh, so we do have a masters in information uh, systems and design uh, data data science excuse me um, which would be sort of our closest that you could get to that um, i can send if that person um, has a question, then I can send a link to um, that, the English description of that course. Thank you, Professor. And also in your presentation, you have mentioned that you frequently send out the emails of these scholarships. So it's like when, they apply, when students apply for the admission, so they're not automatically eligible for scholarships, but they have to separately apply for the scholarships, right? Yes, this is correct. Okay, okay, thank you. And are there any PhD courses or in hotel management? Um, unfortunately, not. Um, you can, um, if you were in a PhD course, um, it would have to be in the Graduate School of Natural Science and Engineering. So, uh, tech, natural science and technology, excuse me. So that's the only thing, the only graduate PhD course that we offer in English. Okay, thank you. And and are there any application deadlines? Uh, application deadlines I can send to anybody who would like. Um, it depends on each school that you want to apply to or each faculty that you want to apply to. So, um, but generally um, the, the graduate school for natural science and technology has two different enrollment uh, periods. One is in April and one is in October. And I know those um, sort of the enrollment procedures start in June. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. I think we can end our Q&A session here. Okay. So there are a few other questions. Maybe if you can, try, you can try to answer them in the Q&A portal and also please share the university details. Will do. Yes, okay. thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, much, Professor. Thank you. So uh, let me share my agenda slide now. And next we have uh, the Japanese language school, that is the Kyoto Minsei Japanese language school. We usually get many questions about the language courses, like the short term and long term language courses. So this is your destination for that. It is a well-known language school that provides both short term and long term language courses. An interesting aspect is the word Minsei. So you can find out what this uh, means. And uh, so to provide more details about the university, I invite Mr. Keisuke Yebuta, the in charge of South Asia Arena, to give his presentation. Uh, thank you. So uh, let me share uh, my screen. Okay, so first, uh, as uh, Ms. Takuru said, uh, we would like to clarify that our school is a Japanese language school, a private institution, and we offer Japanese education for students uh, who want to learn Japanese uh, in order to uh, go to higher education or find job in Japan. So let's go on. So as our name suggests, uh, we are located in Kyoto City, and uh, Kyoto is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world. And also it's the center of Japanese history, culture, and tradition. And uh, plus there are uh, many outstanding centuries old shrines and temples, some of which are registered to the world heritage. So uh, if you come to Kyoto, you can, uh, you can really experience the taste of Japanese traditions. 
and our school is located in the western part of Kyoto city and it takes about uh, 15 minutes to the center of Kyoto. Okay, so I would like to explain the role of Japanese language school. So why uh, do you come to Japanese language school? So uh, in many countries, uh, there are institutions where you can learn Japanese, but uh, in many cases, uh, you can only learn a basic level of Japanese, like JRPT N5 or N4. And uh, that's not uh, enough to enter university or work in Japan. Uh, to find university, uh, sorry, to enter university, uh, you at least need JLPT N2 level and uh, preferably N1 level. And that's the same when it comes to working in Japan. So uh, that's uh, what we can help you. So uh, at Japanese language school, you can improve your Japanese skills from the beginner level to advanced level. Uh, so uh, you first uh, come to uh, Kyoto Minsai and study Japanese, and then uh, you improve your Japanese levels. Then uh, you can enter university or you can work in Japan. So uh, some of our students uh, graduate uh, high school and enter Kyoto Minsai and study Japanese and then and they uh, continue for higher education. Some of other students uh, graduate, they have already graduated and uh, hold bachelor's degree or master's degree in their own country. And after that, they come to Japan and study Japanese for uh, for a certain time, and after that, they find a job and work in Japan. Okay, so uh, let me explain about the long-term course. So we actually have uh, two courses. One is academic course. This is for students uh, who want to enroll in higher education in Japan. And uh, the other one is uh, the integrated studies course. This is for students who is planning to live in Japan, work in Japan, or work for a Japanese company. So uh, what's the difference between the two courses? Uh, it is uh, the course length. The course length is different. In academic course, uh, you learn uh, the core things uh, depends on when, when you come to Japan. Uh, we have uh, four timings uh, for admission uh, from April, July, October, and January. And uh, the reason uh, it's different is that in Japan, the school year starts in March. So uh, if you come in April, uh, you have two years to study Japanese. Then you graduate in March and uh, enter uh, the next April. Uh, if you come in October, for example, you have one year and six months, and you graduate in March, and you enter university uh, in April. That's why uh, course length is different. Uh, on the other hand, uh, integrated studies course, uh, you have uh, two years whenever you come to Japan. But you don't have to, you don't have to study uh, two years. So if you find work uh, after studying for one year, you can uh, quit the job and start working. Okay, so uh, this is uh, nationalities of students. So one of the features of our school is that uh, students are from around the world, like uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, the Philippines, and so on. And also there are students from Southeast Asia, uh, Nepal, uh, Bangladesh, uh, India, Sri Lanka. So they, there are many students from South, South Asia every year. Okay, uh, so how, how many hours do students study? So uh, students study four hours from Monday to Friday. So for, we have a morning class and afternoon class. So for morning class student, uh, they come to school at nine and uh, study four hours uh, until 1 p.m. And for afternoon class, students come uh, at 2 p.m. and study until 6 p.m. 
Okay. So uh, here I'd like to explain how much time uh, it will take to improve your Japanese skills. So this is the case if you uh, come to Japan without any Japanese skills. So of course you have to start from the very groundwork and uh, JLPT uh, is arranged uh, five level, the lowest and five to the highest one among. And uh, to first, uh, to master elementary level, uh, you need nine months. So uh, it takes nine months to, until you reach uh, N4 level. And after that, uh, you move up to pre-intermediate where uh, you study for three months. Uh, this is a kind of preparation uh, for intermediate level. And after that, uh, you move to N3 level. This is a lower intermediate. You learn six months. And after that, you go to N2 level, which also takes six months. So uh, if you come to Japan without any Japanese skills, uh, it probably takes two years from a complete beginner to end to level. And uh, personally, I recommend that uh, you study elementary level before coming to Japan, uh, because as this chart shows, uh, after two years, you only reach end to level, uh, which means uh, uh, to enter university, uh, you have better have N1, and uh, in this plan, you get only N2. So studying before coming to Japan is very, very important. So this uh, is uh, plan to, uh, if you come to Japan, after completing the elementary level, you start from pre-intermediate, and after that, uh, you study six months each for JLPT and three uh, and two. After that, uh, you study N1 uh, for six months. So in this case, uh, after one year and a month, uh, you, your Japanese levels improve from N4 to N1, which is uh, good to enter university for higher education. So uh, preparation is very important. If you uh, prepare enough uh, to, before coming to Japan, you have great chance uh, to, success, to be successful in your car academic career. Okay, so uh, these are pictures uh, of uh, each level. And uh, if you have ever studied Japanese, you may heard of Minna uh, no Nihongo, which is a very well-known textbook of Japanese. And this is a uh, textbook for intermediate and advanced level. Uh, I'm sorry to disarrive I would like to turn on the light. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> So, and uh, since uh, our school is a Japanese language school, uh, we offer uh, culture and art experience. So this is for students uh, who want to deeply study Japanese history, culture, art, and uh, martial arts. So uh, you can experience uh, tea ceremony, flower arrangement, calligraphy, and so on, like uh, shown in these pictures. So the picture on the left is a tea ceremony, and on the right is a, a floral arrangement or kado. And uh, these are uh, also a pictures from culture and art class. So you can experience uh, wearing Japanese traditional clothing or kimono, or you can even try a Japanese instrumental. Yeah, and a uh, Japanese traditional game and uh, making fan. So uh, at Kyoto Minsai, uh, we help 
students uh, immerse themselves in a Japanese life. So we not only teach Japanese language, but uh, we uh, offer various opportunities to learn about Japanese culture and life. Uh, we also offer special classes uh, during school holidays. We offer GL EJU GLPT preparation class, uh, job hunting preparation class, uh, specified skilled worker visa preparation class. And these are pictures of uh, classrooms. And uh, there is another class. This is uh, optional class during school time. So we provide students with English class, mathematics class, general knowledge class, and mathematics class and general knowledge class are a part of EJU preparation class. So our teachers uh, help students prepare for EJU in order to enter university. So uh, this is about accommodation. Uh, we offer, uh, we provide students with accommodation service. So uh, you can choose single room or share room. And uh, I'm going to skip uh, each dormitory, but we have many dormitories, including single room, share room. Okay. So this is uh, school activities and events. So we have many events uh, throughout the year. So for example, the, we have a Halloween cosplay day and uh, the picture below is Japanese storytelling. Uh, this is uh, education fair. So representatives from universities, vocational schools come to our school so that students can directly ask questions. And we have speech contest, a good opportunity to improve and test your Japanese ability. And we have barbecue party once every year. And uh, we have a seminar about finding a job in Japan. And this is a coming of age ceremony for students who become 20 years old and the Mochi Panding uh, Gion Festival, one of the most famous festivals in Japan. Uh, this is about scholarships. So uh, there are mainly four scholarships now. The one is the Monbu Kagakusho Owner Scholarship. So this is the scholarship uh, provided by the Japanese government. And uh, the second one is scholarships from the support committee of Kyoto Minsai Japanese Language School. And the third one is a scholarship from Kyoto Minsai Japanese Language School. And the last one is Miss Seikanda scholarship. Uh, Miss Seikanda uh, is a former uh, lead teacher of our school. And scholarships, these scholarships are given to students who are excellent at tests and diligent at class, like uh, attending every day and doing homework every day. So every student uh, has chance to get these scholarships. And uh, students, uh, foreigners with student visa can get part-time job and they can work within 28 hours a week. And these are jobs uh, popular among our students, like working at supermarket, convenience store, or at a uh, hotel. And uh, we help students find part-time jobs. Uh, this is part-time job fair at school. And uh, this is uh, fees, but I'd like to skip And finally, I'd like to explain about short-term course. So we have uh, the long-term course and the short-term course. Uh, this is for uh, students uh, who 
like who have visa, a family visa or a working visa, but want to study Japanese. So if you are a university student with an uh, English program, but uh, you want to prepare Japanese for uh, finding a job after graduation, you can uh, come to uh, this short-term course while working out, so for, while studying at university. And uh, the, this is the timetable. Uh, you, the shortest program is two weeks and uh, you can study 10 weeks for uh, each semester, each quarter, but you can continue your study as long as you want. Okay, so this is about uh, our school. So Kyoto Misai Japanese Language School uh, is uh, a school for students who want to learn Japanese in order to uh, enter university or work in Japan. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Professor, for such a fun and interesting presentation. Uh, we can look into the Q and A portal. So there is a student who wants to know if these, if there are any courses like bachelor's degree in the linguistics, like the. Uh, is there any linguistic course available in that language school? Uh, so, uh, like, do we, uh, is the course given in, in the form of a degree or is it just like training for ourselves? Uh, it's just training. So we do not offer any degree. So we are kind of preparation school of okay. Japanese language. Yes, yes, yes. That's great. And also, is uh, what is the process to apply? Like, do they have to contact you for more details? Yeah, so uh, can I share our website? Yes, 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 definitely. You can share those details in the chat box. Sure. So uh, we have a website and to apply, uh, please go here. So uh, this is uh, our website and you have, uh, you can see con contact button on top right and please click here and uh, this is uh, the inquiry form and uh, we actually do not uh, have a page for application so please uh, contact us and tell us that uh, you want to apply uh, we will then uh, we will communicate with you uh, via email and uh, tell you what uh, you have to do. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Professor. And also, suppose a student enrolls in a short term course, so can he shift into a long term course? Uh, it's possible. So, <clears throat> uh, do you mean student like, uh, like studying at university? Uh, Yes, like once we, is it possible to transfer from one course to another course, like from short term uh, course to long term course? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, for example, uh, some students uh, enter a short term course with uh, working holiday visa. And then uh, they decided to uh, study Japanese to eventually enter university. So in that case, uh, the students can change visa. So they Although they have to apply for uh, a student visa to the Immigration Bureau, after that, uh, they can, sorry, uh, after that, uh, student visa is uh, granted, they can change their course from short-term course to the long-term course. Oh, that's, that's an interesting fact. Thank you. And also, like, uh, are there any online programs uh, with the university? Uh, of the university? Yes. Uh, there is no program uh, we affiliate with the universities. So we do have uh, online courses, but uh, it's the main, you know, uh, it's for uh, mainly for uh, 
people who live in Japan and uh, uh, students want to improve their Japanese skills uh, for uh, doing better at work or uh, they have family visa and uh, they want to, they need to learn Japanese in order to live in Japan. Yes, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I think the online courses, especially for students who are already enrolled in universities or who have other activities, it might be useful to them. Yeah, and also uh, uh, online course is good for students who still live in their country, but want to, uh, they, but need uh, environment to study Japanese. So some of them uh, have difficulty accessing uh, Japanese institutions in their own country. So we offer uh, opportunities for them to study Japanese. Yes, 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 Professor, thank you. And also how competitive is it for students to get admission? Well, so basically we, we are not a uh, university. So we basically accept as much as possible so we of course we check uh, whether students really uh, have the, whether they are really determined to study japanese to enter university but we do not uh, have uh, we do not require uh, specific language levels or any uh, require requirements in terms of their ability Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Professor. I think we can end our Q&A session here. Thank you once again for assisting in the questions and for your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, let's check the agenda slide. So now we are almost at the end of the uh, webinar, but still we have one presentation to go. And there are so many students who are looking for student exchange programs and internship opportunities in Japan. Japan Science and Technology and Mr. Nishikawa is your go-to person for all such students. So with this, I invite Mr. Nishikawa, the advisor for international relations and cooperation to present more details about how students can come to Japan uh, as students in exchange programs and as in internships. Okay, can I start now? Uh, yes, Mr. Nishikawa. <clears throat> okay. Uh... My name is Nishikawa uh, from Japan Science and Technology Agency. And today I'm going to talk about the program. Uh, just a minute. Just hold, hold on. Yep. Hmm? Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about the program, invitation program called Sakura Science Program. <clears throat> uh, Japan Science and Technology Agency is a, a government agency under the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. We uh, do research funding and also uh, human resource development in human, uh, in science and technology. And actually, uh, we have an office in New Delhi. <clears throat> we run this office together with the University of Tokyo. Uh, this is uh, South, South Delhi. I'm sure uh, just north to Deer Park. So maybe you may you know. But uh, currently, this uh, uh, almost closed due to COVID-19. But it will soon open, I'm sure. <clears throat> and then uh, we do some joint research program with uh, uh, various countries, including India. So just take an example of uh, India. With India, we have, for example, we have, these uh, projects are running uh, together with India, or, or basically with DST, that is Department of Science Technology of India. Uh, for, one program is with University of Tokyo and IIT Bombay, and then a second one, University of Tokyo with uh, IIT Hyderabad, and so, third one, Kyushu University and IIT Delhi. You know, and then also we have some other program like. Uh, this one, Nagoya Electric Works, this is at the Nihon University. Nagoya Electric Works is one of the largest uh, traffic signal company in Japan. And they tie up with uh, IIT Hyderabad and doing uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, uh, program uh, for, for this mitigation of traffic congestion uh, and also reducing the CO2 emission. 
And we have some other program going on together with Japanese researchers and the Indian researchers. So uh, the main topic of this today is this cyclo science program. <clears throat> we have been doing this program for since uh, 2014. And this is a short term invitation program. That is introductory invitation program. That means uh, short term means one week to maximum three weeks. <clears throat> So uh, basically, for example, uh, uh, this one used to be applied uh, for only four, from only four, for 41 countries, but now starting this year, uh, uh, any country, uh, people from any country can be invited by this program. Uh, and also in the past, it was only limited to the science engineering stream people. But now uh, from starting this year, we expanded this program and cover the humanities and social science uh, stream students. And also, <clears throat> there is, uh, this is an open application type program. So, uh, and also there, there should be a tie up between Japanese uh, receiving organization and also sending organizations in each country, uh, for, for, for example, from India. And this, this uh, school, Japanese high schools, universities, research institutes, private companies, NGO, NPOs, and other registered organizations or groups can be the receiving, can uh, are eligible to apply for this program with the, uh, their counterparts in each country. <laughs> and then, uh, for example, here, this is the process uh, procedures. A receiving organization in Japan submit a proposal uh, to, to JST. And this, uh, uh, through evaluation and analysis, we uh, if we, we decide to award, then uh, the, uh, the, the receiving organization can implement uh, this program. And also, the, this program will provide almost 100% of the expenses. And so, uh, if you are selected by this program, you can visit Japan almost free of charge. Because uh, round trip airfare, and also uh, food and accommodations, and also uh, even uh, insurance, travel insurance is also covered by this program. <clears throat> so uh, this is a uh, very attractive for you, I'm sure. So th there are certain conditions and restrictions. Uh, you have to be uh, 15, that means a high school. Uh, school. High school means a class, 10, 11, 12, you know, it's equivalent to Japanese high school. So uh, usually it is uh, 15 years old. And then people have to be 50, uh, 40 years or below. So this program is meant, meant for the young generation, people of a young generation. You have to be, uh, of course, uh, you have to have uh, very much talented or aspiring students or highly motivated students or, or researchers. And of course, uh, basically you have to speak English, but uh, for, from your country, I'm sure there's no problem. And then this, well, this pro, the number four, condition number four, this one, those who have not studied in Japan before. So if you have already studied in Japan for say, one year or so, then you are not eligible. But uh, you just visited Japan as a tourist for a couple of weeks, that is okay, no problem. And this is just an example. For example, uh, all of the implementation, implementation of, of sacro science program by the receiving organization. Take it to Delhi, Bombay, Bombay Hyderabad, Karagur, Madras, and so on. And there's a for three weeks uh, program. And they did a, some a small uh, joint research program. And then, uh, so you know, this is a list uh, of the universities in Japan as a receiving organization. Uh, in terms of the number of universities, how many students or researchers they invited so far. So in, in this case, the music University has, has the largest number. 757 student people have been, uh, they invited to Japan, to their university. The second, number, uh, second one is Okayama University, Osaka University, Tokyo Metropolitan University, Shiba Ura Institute of Technology, Kyushu Institute of Technology, University of Tokyo, Tokyo Science, you know, University of Science, and uh, you know, all these top universities, very good universities in Japan, they all use uh, this program, apply for this program and succeed uh, did in inviting people from various countries. So I'm sure uh, all, all Japanese universities or uh, all Japanese high schools, or, or they have, they can apply for this program. 
And in the, uh, this program started in, 2000, in the year 2014. And then uh, so far, uh, total 33, over 33,000 people from 41 countries have been invited. And then uh, number one biggest country is China, like over 10,000. And then number two, uh, Thailand, that is 3,500 over. And then India, uh, 2,849. So uh, India comes number two. Uh, I'm sure India should be at least a number a second position or even number five, number one position because of the in, 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 in terms of uh, the, uh, the size of the population and we should be, we should come more. That means uh, Japanese university and the Indian universities in India, for example, they don't have a, a, as close connections, uh, as much connection as with China. So. Uh, we try to increase such uh, uh, relation uh, with Japanese university and uh, Indian university. So uh, if you are in, from India, just uh, try to come by this program. <clears throat> and then uh, this is just an example. Uh, these schools from uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, ten, about 10 students uh, from high school, they, they were invited to Japanese university and she was got a, and then after that, she got accepted by the University of Tokyo uh, last year. And also to one more, another student from the same school, same group, uh, also he, he was accepted by the university this year. Uh, I'm sure they are uh, studying on online so far, because they cannot come to Japan due to COVID-19. But um, hopefully, uh, maybe next year, I hope uh, they can actually come to Japan. And then uh, those people who are invited to Japan uh, will be automatically become the alumni member. That is Sakura Science Club. That is alumni uh, member. <clears throat> and then, then first, uh, for this is in case of example, you know, we set up an alumni association in India. And the first alumni uh, meeting was held in October 5, 2018. This is at, at the Japanese ambassador's official residence. We had a, a, a big party. And uh, this, he is the ambassador here on the right hand side. And uh, uh, he already, of course, changed. He's uh, then uh, uh, ambassador. Uh, and then uh, our chief guest was uh, uh, Professor Vijay Lagahavan. He's a uh, principal scientific officer to the government of India. And that time we had, uh, we chose uh, the main coordinator, that is, for example, that is equivalent to the president of the Alumni Association. Uh, that is Dr. Jiten Dachu. He's uh, actually at, uh, assistant professor of AISA Pune. He was all, he visited also Japan by this program in the past. <laughs> so he, he volunteered to become the uh, main coordinator. Of, and so uh, there are uh, at that time uh, four other, three others uh, selected. But now currently we have about ten um, uh, members of the alumni coordinators group. <clears throat> and the second uh, uh, alumni meeting was held. Uh, uh, last year, 2020 February, uh, just before the COVID pandemic start, uh, this was held at the IIT, Hydra, uh, IIT Delhi campus. I also went there. This is myself. And the ambassador, Japanese ambassador also came. And then we had some uh, uh, photo session, or, uh, some uh, contest and so on. And this is a sad meeting this year. Uh, because COVID-19, we cannot hold it uh, you know, uh, in, in India. So we held it uh, online. Uh, on this year, May this year, and invited uh, a very uh, uh, top scientists, Indian scientists, who are studying, doing the research in Japan. And uh, this is a, a photo. And uh, the, at the center top here, he is a main coordinator, Dr. Jiten Dachu. And uh, the right hand side is an uh, ambassador of Japan. And at the uh, bottom side here, uh, he's uh, Mr. Miyagi of University of Tokyo, India. He's a director of the uh, India Office of University of Tokyo. So many people participated on in this. Uh, or these are the guest people. <laughs> and then, uh, in, for example, in case of Sri Lanka, we also had uh, this meeting, first meeting uh, uh, in 2019 in Colombo. This is in Colombo. And uh, this is, uh, we had, uh, we also have an uh, alumni association in Japan. And we had a uh, uh, alumni meeting uh, in Japan. On, this is also online uh, in 2021 March. Uh, this is the first alumni meeting uh, online. And so, uh, actually, this this program is of course highly regarded and valuable, uh, valued by both government sending receiving countries. <clears throat> and then. Uh, 
you know, this is the most important thing for you to remember. If you want to come to Japan, uh, you cannot apply because this is not a, a person to person or individual to individual program. This is a, a organ institutional program. So uh, there should be sending organizations and also receiving organizations in Japan. So if you, you belong to a school or a university in your country, <laughs> your, your university or your school have to find the hosting host university host uh, schools in japan so uh, of course uh, uh, those universities who made the presentations or of schools they can be the receiving organization of course so uh, if you first thing most important things you have to find the partner receiving organizations in japan so if you are a student you speak to your principal or your teacher or principal and those you are uh, a university student, you can speak to your professor and uh, request him to, to find a place, um, the partner in Japan. And then if you are, you are receiving uh, organization uh, agreed or accept to, to receive you, then uh, they can make application to us. And then hopefully uh, uh, if you can come to Japan, you know, uh, and then after that, uh, if you like Japan, maybe you can, apply officially to for the uh, higher education or school education in Japan. So uh, this is uh, uh, at the end of my presentation. So just remember Sakura Science Program and we have a, so you just Google uh, Sakura Science Program and then uh, you can find all the details you need. Uh, but as, as I told here, you know, you first find the pattern. That is very important. Okay, thank you. If you have any question, you can just ask. Thank you, Mr. Nishikawa, for an interesting presentation. And it's so amazing that around uh, in a span of about seven years, 33 students, 33,000 students have come mm -hmm. to Japan. So that's, that's really great. So we can look into the Q&A portal. Uh, so there's a person who works in a private company. So are there, uh, like, can the companies have tie up with the educational institutions and come as a part of Sakura Science Program? Yes, as long as uh, the receiving organization, receiving university agree or uh, to, to invite your company, you know, that is also okay. But usually the, uh, the Japanese university will uh, uh, tie up with the, uh, the counterpart in each country. So, but Japanese, you know, Japanese company can tie up with uh, companies in, in your country and they invite some, uh, uh, some people from their each other you know, to, to, to Japan. <laughs> if, uh, so, uh, but usually Japanese company they use this program for, for future, maybe for future employment or something like that. So maybe most likely they, they invite from university in your country. So this is, or generally speaking, this is a, a, a thing. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's an interesting fact to know. Of course, you. Uh, if you somehow manage, you know, somehow manage, then Japanese company can invite your uh, people from your company. That is, uh, uh, is it possible? Of course. Okay, okay, that's that's nice. Thank you, Mr. Nishikawa. And uh, how how difficult or easy it is for a university or a company in India to contact a host university in Japan? Like, which division should they contact? Like, is it the international office or any other department? Uh, generally speaking, I, I, I think, you know, you are in, in your university, for example, I, I'm sure there is, should be at least one professor who have a colleague, I mean, partner university, a professor in Japan. <laughs> then he can request uh, to, to, you know, the Japanese university uh, professor directly <laughs> because uh, there should be some res person responsible uh, in Japanese university, some uh, responsible professor or assistant professor, that is all okay. But there should be someone in Japanese organization. So uh, you have to find someone, uh, you know, some key person in Japan. So, uh, you so in, your in your university, you try or search all over in your university and find some professor who knows some professors in Japan. That is the quickest way, I'm sure. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Nishikawa, for the amazing presentation and also for assisting in the Q&A session. So we can end our Q&A session and we are, uh, thank you once again. And we have reached the end of the webinar. So I thank you once again to, uh, for attending the webinar. So in order to attend more uh, future webinars, I request you to scan this QR code.
in the next slide and also you can note down these details and uh, contact the Utokyo India office. So we are here to uh, help you and assist you in any queries. And yes, that's all for today. So see you in upcoming webinars. Thank you.